welcome to Conference Baseball Northwest Suburban Conference play. Champlin Park and Elk River. Late regular season matchup between the Rebels and the Elks. Elk River 9 and 5 coming into play today in Champlin Park. 9 and 7 on the season. The section play will start in less than a week. John Jacobson and Matt Smith here at Champlin Park High School. And this actually, although two conference teams playing, not a conference. Uh, game per se. It does not count in the conference standings with the, the spring we've had. The uh, conference season itself was shortened and the all teams weren't playing each other twice. So uh, the first meeting between these two teams back at the start of the season, which Champlain Park won 6-4, to four, actually counts in the conference standings. But through all the conference games played, Elk River, along with Anoka, topped the Northwest Suburban for the season with eight and two conference marks. Champlin Park, five and five on the season. And even though this doesn't count as a conference game, Matt, both coaches told me beforehand, it is an important one because we're down to those last couple of games where it counts for where you might be seated in the section, which is very important. It is, and uh, being in this uh, kind of position last year with our team, um, you, both teams know it's crunch time coming down to playoffs and they need to be playing their best baseball. He saw the batting order a moment ago for Elk River. That's the order that will go against Trevor Kaminsky, the senior for Champlin Park. Kaminsky on the season, a three and one record. ERA of 0 0.79, and he has struck out 28 batters in 17 and two thirds innings. We are ready to go with the first pitch. Ben Johnson, the junior, DH leading off, takes the first pitch High for ball one. Johnson on the season hitting 311. He's hitting today for the third baseman, Brandon Meyer. And catching the corner is Kaminsky for a strike. It's one and one. As it's grounded to short, kept Youngquist up with it there. Throw on to first. And the out made Eric Pearson the put out at first. Johnson retired and went away. Look at the Rebels defense for today around the infield. Eric Pearson at first, Riley Johnson at second. Youngquist the shortstop, Brian McGill at third. In the outfield, Michael Brooks, Daniel Keel. And in right field for today, Tim Munn. Catcher Derek Smith and Trevor Kaminsky. The starting pitcher for today. He's going against left-handed hitting Joe Gonrowski is the left fielder. Gonrowski, 292 average on the season for the nine and five Elks. Eight runs batted in, four walks, three doubles. Kaminsky falling behind in the count. This one catches the inside corner for strike one. It's two and one. Cutting a miss. Good fastball and it's two and two. Jordan Holm to follow here in the bottom top of the first for Elk River. And Kaminsky's pitch. Swing and a miss. And there's a strikeout. Looks like he did get a piece of it, but hung on to by Derek Smith. For out number two. Ryan Holmgren, that was 30 years head coach of Elk River, was an assistant here under Barry Bovers in the mid 2000s for six seasons and was at Spring Lake Park, his third year now at Elk River, lives in Elk River. And this team, conference champions for this spring. They're in section seven, so in a different section than Champlain Park, who will stay closer to this area. They're in section five, whereas Elk River, one of the teams that heads up with some of the northern, northeastern Minnesota teams, the bigger schools. 1-1 one, one count now to Jordan Holm, senior first baseman, a 357 average on the season. Swing and a miss. Matt Trevor Comiskey works, works pretty quickly. He gets the ball and gets set, gets the sign, and he goes. He does. He, uh, I, I really enjoyed catching him last year. He, uh, his fastball, he'll, he'll feature a good fastball, good two-seam movement, uh, arm side. He'll, uh, he's got, he, I think he's been working on a little cutter over the, the uh, 
the winner. And so it looks like he's been uh, throwing, throwing the ball pretty well. 1-2 count to Holcomb. And Kaminsky's pitch, swing and a miss. So he strikes out the last two batters. And it's a 1-2-3, top half of the first inning. So, Champlin Park coming to bat for the first time today. And a good, yeah. uh, a good start for Kaminsky and the Rebels. As you look at the batting order for Champlin Park, Tim Dell on the right fielder leading off, Trevor Kaminsky batting second, Daniel Keel hitting third, Jason Anderson the DH today, it's for the shortstop Kip Youngquist, Derek Pearson hitting fifth, Brian McGill at third, Derek Smith batting seventh and catching, Riley Johnson at second, and Michael Brooks in left batting ninth. And the Elk River defense today around the infield, Holm, Gillins, Nyquist, and Brandon Meyer at third in the outfield. Gronowski in left. In center field is Milo Holmes. And in right field, Andrew McMillan. Brendan Beezy is the catcher today. And the pitcher, Austin Hoyer. Hoyer's a senior. He's you know, the third, fourth guy for Elk River. He getting into the late in the spring with so many rainouts we've had. And, and he going a little deeper in your pitching staff. Hoyer this year does have a 1-0 record. ERA of 6.46 had just one start on the season. And that was a couple Saturdays ago against Spring Lake Park where he got up, got the win, gave up an early home run, then settled down over the next four innings to get the victory for the Elks. And he gets the call today to face his Champlain Park team. It's been hitting a little better as of late. Started a little slow with the bats, but had 20 hits in a win over Park Center on Thursday. And that's what you want to see, Matt, late in the season as you gear up for the playoffs. Everything hopefully starting to come together for your for your club. Yeah, it's always uh, pretty nice when you guys are finally hitting your stride as a team uh, coming in late in the season. So hopefully you can keep it going through playoffs. So Hoyer ready to go to work on the Rebels lineup here this afternoon. In Champlain Park, nine and seven on the season. Elk River nine and five. They've got a second game scheduled for the day. This one actually started at 3:45, half hour usual, earlier than usual, and they are tonight are going to Anoka to take on the Tornadoes in the 7:15 game. And although those that game does not count in the conference stand, as we mentioned earlier, it's very important because both of those teams are in Section Seven, so it does count again for section implications and. Whoever comes out of there is going to have an edge uh, in the section seating, especially if it's Elk River because they already beat Anoka once this season. If they can sweep the Tornadoes, that would give them a, a leg up in section seven. One ball and one strike to the Rebels' leadoff hitter. Tim Dunn, the right fielder. A little high from Hoyer. It's two and one. Lifted in the air, added to short left field. Gonrowski down to the shortstop, moving back and making the catch is Nyquist for out number one. That the wind can be tricky here, can it, at this ballpark? It really can. Uh, usually, it, wind usually blows out to the left on a good day. So hopefully we can see some. Hopefully we can see some home runs hit today. Trevor Kaminsky hitting second. Kaminsky ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Swung on and hit the third, fielded foul by Meyer. And it goes as a strike. Trevor at the plate this spring, 20 for 53. 377 batting average. And lines this one out into center field. It's going to drop for the first hit of the game. So one out single 
for Trevor Kaminsky in the first base run of the game. Look at the pitch again, Matt. That was a fastball right down the middle, and Trevor did a good job staying on it. Hits it right up the middle, nice single. So runner on with one out, and the center fielder, Daniel Keel, batter. Hoyer's first pitch fouled off. Look at Corey Davis, first year head coach here at uh, Champlain Park. He's been with the program a, a few years, but gets a chance to, to take over. He had a chance to, to work with Coach Davis in the past. I uh, He actually coached our Legion team last year, and he I felt like he did a really good job. So seems like he's doing a good job this year with the varsity team. Throw to first, close play. Trevor Kaminsky just does get back in under the tag of Holum. No balls in a strike. He missed inside. It's one and one. Hit in the air out to right field. McMillan over makes the catch, and there's two down. He'll fly out. And it brings up the cleanup hitter, Jason Anderson, at the DH today. Courtesy runner for Kaminsky. That's Kale McElroy, senior. He's in running for Kaminsky at first. You guys got it? Anderson ready to step in now. Just one extra base hit. For Jason on the season, he's got a 326 average though. Walks six times. Another close play at first. Saw Kaminsky diving back in this time. McElroy having to dive back in. Pretty good move by the pitcher Hoyer for a right hander. He takes a look again. Now we'll come through with the pitch to Anderson. Grounded foul past third. Let's play again. Matt. Ooh, that was that awfully was a lot, close. A lot closer than it looked from uh, out here. One strike to Anderson. Grounded, pass third into left field. It's a single for Anderson. On his way to third is McElroy. Here's the throw to the bag and gets away, and he's in safely. He may have beaten the throw anyway, but then the throw getting away from Meyer didn't allow the chance for the Elks to get the out. So a, a grace, aggressive base running by the senior McElroy, and he gets all the way from first to third on the single to left by Jason Anderson. It's a good job by McElroy. Noticing that the left fielder had uh, taken his time getting to the ball and swipes an extra base. Two runners at the corners, two away. And Eric Pierce in the batter. Pierce in a sophomore. And takes the first pitch strike. Two ninety two batting average for Pearson in twenty four at bats. And went in the dirt, he swung and missed. And Hoyer's ahead, two strikes. Hoyer trying to get out of trouble here in the bottom half of the first inning. Ball up high. One and two. Hey, 
Boyer ready, throws, checking his swing is Pearson. The count evens up a two and two. Hit in the air pretty well out to center. But in the glove safely. And Holmes making the catch for out number three. So Champlain Park out in the bottom of the first. No runs, two hits, they leave two. He'll go to the second inning, no score. Champlain Park and Elk River. You watch Channel 12 at home, why not on the go? Channel 12 is online at 12.tv. Watch on your phone, on your tablet. Channel 12 is your local source wherever you go. Just log on to 12.tv. Check out our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and even watch live events via live stream. So don't wait. Stay up to date with Channel 12 and 12.tv, your local source. We go to the top half of the second inning. No score, Elk River, Champlain Park. Thanks for tuning in for our coverage of high school baseball on Channel 12. It's been a tough spring for the teams, and really in every spring sport, golfers getting started late with golf courses, the late openings, and lacrosse probably the most unaffected, although they've certainly had a few postponements, but many of the teams playing on turf fields. Champlain Park, uh, an exception to that. Baseball and softball teams that games stacked up. And by this spring's standards in Minnesota, Matt, today is considered a nice day, and it's only about 55 degrees and a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good day so far. A little cloudy, not too bad. A little wind. Brennan BZ is the catcher. He's the leadoff hitter for the Elks. Takes a strike call, number four hitter in the lineup today. Got a home run, three RBIs, five runs scored on the season for the Elks. Two-two pitch from Kaminsky on the way, foul of the plate, and Beasy stays alive. Fouling it off. And the count stays at two and two. Eric Nyquist and Austin Hoyer to follow Beasy here in the top of the second for the Elks. Shot down to third, but that's foul. So three straight fouls of the plate for BZ. Good at bat for him, but didn't catch up with this one. Pitch getting away. Smith picking it up, throwing to first, and it gets into right field. And so BZ will reach. It'll go as a throwing error on the catcher, Derek Smith. Strikeout recorded officially, but an error allowing BZ to gain first base. So they get a runner on to start the second. Now we get a courtesy runner at first base. Ben Boutain will run for the catcher, BZ.
Nyquist the shortstop. He's the number five hitter. The Elks have their first runner aboard. Kaminsky's pitch, nice bunt. Kaminsky's only play will be to first base. Pearson making the catch, and the runner with chain moving on to second base. It's a good sacrifice, just how you want to play it, man. It is, it is. Did his job and moved the runner over to second base. One three on the put out. And here's Hoyer. As a hitter, senior pitcher with a 326 average. Seven runs batted in, eight runs scored. Plays some first and third when he's not pitching. Right-hander Kaminsky looking back at the runner and delivers home, and it's off the glove of Smith. And headed down to third goes Boutain. Almost looked like Smith got crossed up a little bit on that pitch. Look at it again. Oh, yeah. Looks like he was expecting either a breaking ball or a change up blow, and Kaminsky surprised him with the fastball up high. So you're a catcher. Do you score that a pass ball or a wild pitch? That's a tough call just because it's with a cross up and everything and the score is going to have to take into account that he, it, it looked like he got crossed up. So, but Smith did a nice job of catching that ball. Yeah, he did. That was high and almost. That would have gotten back to the screen, would have scored Boutain, but he makes the grab. Kaminsky comes in with a strike here and the count goes to two and one. The Elks with a runner at third. And one out here in the top of the second. This one grounded past third and the left field, the base hit. Boutain scores, an RBI for Hoyer, and it's 1-0 Elk River. Solid single to left by the Elks pitcher. Just out of the reach of McGill at third base. First hit of the game for the Elks. Produces a run, and here's Andrew McMill in the right fielder. Strike call to him. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Cut and a miss. Good fastball. One ball and two strikes. Comiskey could really use a ground ball right here. H.J. Overton is a courtesy runner for Hoyer at first. Takes his lead on Pearson and gets a strikeout. Kaminsky does. His fourth of the game, and there's two away. Number eight hitter is Riley Givens, the junior second baseman for the Elks. There's a 289 batting average into today. Couple of doubles, three RBIs, seven runs scored, throw the first. Overton back in under the tag of Pearson. Strike. Outside corner. 0-1-1 to Gibbons. High. 
One ball, one strike. Kaminsky ready to work again. Given steps in. And a cut and a miss and a high fastball to one and two. There we go, Ryan. Let's go, five. Now, let's go. Five, kick. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. It's another strikeout for Kaminsky, but the Elks in the inning, they pick up a run on a hit, an error, and one left on. It goes with an unearned run against Kaminsky, but a run for the Elks. It's Elk River on top. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more. Inning and a half. It's Elk River one, Champlain Park nothing. It must be love. It must be hospice. Maple Grove, New Hope, and Brooklyn Center. Channel 12 is your local source. When it comes to TV channels, you've got choices. As a matter of fact, you've got lots of choices. But only one channel is your local source in your community every day, bringing you the news, sports, events, and city information that affect you. So seek out the source. Channel 12, 30 years your local source. Look at the scoreboard here at Champlain Park High School. one nothing Elks as we go to the bottom half of the first inning. Second inning, excuse me, Brian McGill leading it off for the Rebels. Derek Smith, Riley Johnson to follow. And this one grounded past third deep in the hole at short. No play for Nyquist. It'll be a lead off single for McGill in the Champlain Park second. How much you can do as a shortstop here? Not much you could do. You'd have to have a major league arm to make that play. And as a high schooler, you don't really expect that out of him. It was a good play to get to it, but not, not much you could do. That brings up Smith. Throw down to first. And in safely is McGill. Close plays. They almost got McGill. Smith couldn't get the bunt down in the high pitch. And McGill scrambling to get back. A pretty good throw by Beasy. And Holmes tag just missing getting McGill. So he's back in safely. One ball, no strike. Now 2-0 to Derek Smith. Warriors pitch gets the bunt down nice. It's going to be a tough play. Throw to first. Good hustle down the line. Smith beats it out. Look at it again, man. Looks like Derek squares around a little early and gets it down. Nice play to get to it by the catcher, but just not in time. Good hustle, good hustle by Smith. So two runners on, nobody out. This was grounded to short. The only play for the Elks will be at first and in safely. And bases are going to be loaded as Riley Johnson first pitch swinging. And Nyquist throw a little bit high. Hold Holm off the bag. 
Looked like he yeah, beat he it. Yeah, he actually just beat it. He, yeah, he, he didn't he beat it pull up. his uh, foot at all. So some good speed by Riley Johnson because it was, it was not hit sharply, but not that slow of a hit. You thought <laughs> the Nyquist would be able to get to a play at first, but Riley Johnson speeding down the line. So three balls that haven't gotten out of the infield. Matt and the Rebels have the bases loaded. Yeah, I mean, you can take it, take it any way you can take it. Michael Brooks is the batter, number nine hitter and left fielder for Champlin Park. There's a strike. Two strikes is. Hoyer trying to work out some, out of some major trouble here in the bottom of the second. Hey. And caught by the catcher on the foul tip. Good play by Beasy. And Brooks is retired. One away in the Rebels second, back to the top of the order, and Tim Munn. On with a pop to short in his first at bat. And this is hit towards short. Nyquist will get the out at second to first, not in time, and the run will score. Fielder's choice. McGill comes in, and Champlin Park ties it up. At one. They got the out at second, forcing Johnson, but unable to complete the double play at first. Good hustle by Tim. Allows the Rebels to score a run. Lay the courtesy runner goes down to third. That's the second out of the inning. The out recorded at second. And now Kaminsky, the batter. Throw to first. You got the runner hung up. Now the runner cutting for home and in safely. And everybody's safe. As a run for Champlin Park. And they take a two to one lead. You see that happen from time to time. Try the, the offense actually trying to get the defense to just throw the ball around to have exactly what happened. Uh, happened in this case in Champlin Park taking the lead. Smart play by uh, Munn over at first. Gets picked off and realizes he can't get back, so he gets himself in a rundown, and ball goes to second. The runner on third decides to run home, and easy run scored. So Champlin Park takes the lead with Munn in safely at second. Warrior's going to gather himself back in. He, you know, he's, he pitched pretty well this inning, but three infield hits and a couple of runs. He's doing all he can ask out of a pitcher. He's getting ground balls, and he's getting plays for his infielders to make, and they're just hitting spots that, unfortunately, they're, the Rebels hitters are beating out. Minsky with a single in his first at bat. Then Hoyer pitches low, ball one to him. He's got speed on second base with Tim Munn, and basically any ball hit to the outfield that lands softly or lands safely, there'll probably be another run. And Munn's had a good season, a 413 average coming into the day, the leadoff hitter. Strike call to Kaminsky, one and one. This one bounced to short. Nyquist up with it. Low throw to first. Ryan is safe. Kaminsky is safe at first. An error on the low throw by Nyquist, and Kaminsky reaches. A little bit of a low throw, and then I don't know that it was fielded cleanly either by Holm Kaminsky. He's in safe. You see the ball on the ground. Mm 
Munn on to third. McElroy will run again for Kaminsky at first. And the inning continues for Champlin Park. And here's Keel, the center fielder. First pitch to him is a strike throw down to second. And in safely, it was cut off actually by the second baseman Gibbons as they were looking for Munn to break from third. It didn't happen this time, and it's a stolen base. McElroy's down at second. Two runners in scoring position, one strike to Keel. Up high. Two ninety two average for Daniel this spring, fouled at the plate. One ball and two strikes. One laced into left field. That's a base hit. Munn is in. McElroy will be held at third. And in the second is Keel. He gets an RBI. Munn coming in to score. It'll be an unearned run and an RBI for Keel. Good hustle by Kelb right here on the throw home, cut off by the third baseman, but Kelb. Uh, Good hustle, getting into second base, getting into scoring position. Well, three runs on the board for the Rebels here in the second. It continues with Jason Anderson. Had a single in his first at bat, first pitch away for ball one. Runners at second and third. Warriors pitch, Anderson. Checked his swing, it's 2-0. Oh. <laughs> Chance for a big inning here for Champlin Park. Cut and a miss, good pitch by Hoyer, it's 2-1. He needed a strike and he gets one there. He gets Anderson to chase one low and away. To look at the runners at third and second. Outside and low, three and one. Strike call. Three balls, two strikes to Jason Anderson. And went after that one, offered at him there, strike three. And getting out of further trouble is Hoyer. Not a lot of that was his fault, but Champlin Park taking advantage. They put the ball in the right spot that inning. They pick up three runs in the second inning on four hits and error, and they leave two. We go to the top of the third inning. Our score now, Champlin Park three, Elk River one. Hi, I'm here to tell you about a new medical website designed especially for older folks. Website, you say? I can't work on computers. They're not senior friendly, blah, blah, blah. But the National Institutes of Health fixed all that. Now you can make the type bigger, increase contrast, even make it talk to you. Arthritis. Just go to NIHSeniorHealth.gov and get the best medical information available anywhere. NIHSeniorHealth.gov, built with you in mind.
John Jacobson, Matt Smith back at Champlain Park High School. You move to the top half of the third inning. And a first pitch strike to Milo Holmes. Elk River center fielder, first at bat today. 276 batting average on the season. Right back to Kaminsky. He'll throw on to Pearson at first and one away. Quick comeback, but even pretty good reaction time. He, not all pitchers are able to make that play, man. Not too many. Trevor's uh, Trevor's one heck of an athlete, that's for sure. Back to the top of the order for the Elks and Ben Johnson, the batter. And he's going to bunt right back to Kaminsky. Easy play for him here. Johnson wanted to bunt, but not in that particular spot. He made it a pretty easy play for the pitcher. Yeah, this pitch, this uh, this bunt right back at the pitcher, what he would want to, what he, what he would have wanted to do was uh, either bunt it on the line or follow us. Kind of a big mantra with the uh, bunting. If you're going to bunt for a base hit, you want it either on the line or foul. Just so it doesn't make an easy play for that pitcher. Check swing by Joe Gunrowski, the left fielder for the Elks. 0 for 1 today. Cutting a miss, 1 and 1. Hit him, and apparently it hit Gunnarowski first. Port skipping away, so he will take first. Elks with their third base runner. And here's Holum. First pitch swinging and fouls it out of play. This is hit hard at third. Good throw over to first by McGill to Pearson. And Holm retired and the Elks out in the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. The Elks have stranded two. And we play two and a half innings. Our score, Champlain Park three, Elk River one. Yeah, but did you see how much he had to drink last night? I can't believe that guy made it home. Nobody drives drunk anymore. Hold on, I got another call coming in. While drunk driving rates have dropped greatly, negligent driving and speeding fatalities have skyrocketed. Someone dies every 13 minutes from negligent driving, so keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, and your phone put away. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. afternoon for baseball today. Champlain Park on top of Elk River. Three one or score. We move to the bottom half of the third inning. Eric Pearson, Brian McGill, and Derek Smith up to face Austin Hoyer. Pearson a fly out to the center fielder Holmes in his first at bat. At end of the first inning. What are your thoughts so far, Matt, today on the the Elks pitcher Austin Hoyer in the first two innings. I think he's doing a good job. He's keeping the ball low. He's mixing speeds, mixing in that breaking ball that they're uh, 
the Rebels are chasing that a little bit. And this one tagged pretty well out to left and it'll go for extra bases. Pearson around first, he'll slow up at second base and a leadoff double for Eric Pearson here in the bottom half of the third. One of the, one of the few mistakes that Hoyer's made today, just left the fastball up and Pearson turned on it and put it on the left field line. So the leadoff runner aboard. Pearson's first extra base hit of the season. And here's Brian McGill. Got that second inning started. First of eight Rebel batters to come to the plate in the second. And then single the deep short. And scored the first of three runs. They're falling behind in the count. Two balls, no strikes. There's a strike call. Miguel following it out of play. Found that off his foot and it stings. Tries to walk it off. What you can do about that? You just got to kind of. Those definitely dig, hurt. Dig back in. They hurt. Two balls, two strikes. And there's a cold or strike three. Got a piece of it actually, but it's caught by the catcher, BC, and there's out number one. For Hoyer, his third strikeout. And now Derek Smith. Smith with that bunt single on the play. He was trying to get a sacrifice and beat it out. And this one had played the deep second. And everybody's safe. And Smith is two for two. Good play by Givens to get over to keep the ball from going into center. And that does keep Pearson to third base. But Givens did all he could, but Smith with decent speed, able to beat it out, gets down to first. It'll be run for again. Pearson stopping at third, runners at the corners for the Rebels. And then Riley Johnson, the batter. Johnson also an infield single, his first at bat. Throw to first, lay back in. Runner going, strike call, throw, cut off, throw home. And it gets to the backstop, delay all the way to third. Pearson in to score. Another run in for Champlain Park. Boy, very similar Matt to last inning to what happened. Not, not a pickoff play this time, but again, they get the Elks to, to throw down to second. Gibbons came in front of the bag, but his throw home, I think, would have been too late anyway, but then throws, throws it high and allows the runner from second to get to third. It was a good play, good play to cut off that ball and throw it home. It was just unfortunately too high and the run scores. But it's an error on Gibbons to allow Belay to get on to third. A block at the plate here by Beasy stopping the pitch. 
One ball and one strike to Johnson. Pearson's run the fourth of the game here for Champlin Park. Lawyers pitch inside, two and one. Thing right now that Riley Johnson needs to do at the plate is to hit a fly ball somewhere deep in the outfield, try and score that run. Infield playing in for the Elks. Already down three runs, and want to keep this one close. Time called. Beasy out to talk to Hoyer. Two balls, two strikes to Johnson. Hoyer's pitch hit out in the air to center. Should be an easy Holmes, run. Yep, back, makes the catch. Lay running well, and the courtesy runner in standing up. Sacrifice fly, nicely done by Riley Johnson. Gets the run home, and it's 5-1, Rebels. Look at it again, man. That's how you called. He wanted to get it deep to the outfield, and he, and he did. Good job of execution by Riley Johnson there. Two outs, nobody on, and Michael Brooks the batter. Strike call. No balls, two strikes to Brooks. Chopped at the plate. Brooks a 250 average on the season coming into play today, eight for 32. Seven singles and a double. Two pitch, slow roller, the third, Meyer up with it. And he gets past the bag at first, and on his way to second, still digging is Brooks. He's on his way to third, and he is in standing up. So we'll give him a kick, because he was gonna beat that one out, but then the throw by Meyer from third, sailing down the right field line. Think you look at it again. It was not hit terribly hard. Meyer had to hurry it. Meyer to make a tough play here and makes a throw and gets past the first baseman. Brooks sees that, takes the extra base, goes all the way to third. Good base runner. Picked up his uh, coach, Corey Davis. He never hesitated coming around that second base bag. It was a good job of base running there. Back to the top of the order. Brooks in scoring position at third. And Munn the batter. This one hit down to second. Gibbons up with it. Now to hold him at first. And there's the third out of the inning. But Champlin Park able to plate two more runs. They're in the third. They pick up two runs on three hits. Two more errors for Elk River. And one left on. We played three. It's Champlin Park five. Elk River one. You watch Channel 12 at home. Why not on the go? Channel 12 is online at 12.tv. Watch on your phone, on your tablet. Channel 12 is your local source wherever you go. Just log on to 12.tv. Check out our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and even watch live events via live stream. So don't wait. Stay up to date with Channel 12 and 12.tv, your local source. Oh! oh. 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 
e-file. Get receipt confirmation and a quicker refund. Log on or tell your tax preparer to e-file for you and join the 53 million e-filers who consider it done. Moved to the top half of the fourth inning, Champlain Park, now the five to one lead on Elk River. It's Trevor Kaminsky out for his fourth inning of work. Brent Beasy leading off. He'll be followed by Eric Nyquist and Austin Hoyer. Beasy reaching on a drop third strike at his first at bat, and then his courtesy runner, Boutain, came around to score the first run of this game. One pitch, the high two and one. So as a catcher, what do you like about what Trevor Kaminsky's doing today as a pitcher? He's keeping the ball low. It looks like his ball's got a lot of movement today. He's definitely doing a good job mixing speeds, mixing in that really good changeup of his. See, seen a couple of breaking balls this this uh, top half of the inning, which you haven't really seen in the innings prior. But he's he's doing a good job. skipping away for your average high school hitter then with what's the toughest pitch of, of his to hit is it the 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 off-speed pitch I'd say it'd be it'd probably be his changeup because he he throws it throws it pretty well he, he he hides it pretty well and then his arm speed's the same it just comes out looking like a fastball and then just drops off 2-2 Two -two pitch easy frozen it's a called third strike and out number one on the fourth Strike on number six with the senior Kaminsky. And the batter's Nyquist. Cut and a miss. Strike one to Nyquist with a sacrifice button his first at bat. One ball, one strike on the low pitch. Neck was chopping it foul past Ryan Holmgren at third. One ball, two strikes. Swing to miss. Throw down to first by Smith. Gets it on target to Pearson. And there's out number two. So two outs, nobody on. And Austin Hoyer, the batter. Strike call. One and one. Let's keep bouncing that one. It's two and one. Has not walked to batter today. Did hit Gonrowski in the third. Had good control. Fastball there. Strike. And it's two and two. This one hit well out into right, but hangs up for the right fielder Mun to make the catch. Pretty well struck by Hoyer, but in the air and the liner grabbed. Maimon for out number three. Three up, three down for the Elks in the fourth. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. It remains 5-1, Champlain Park.
Not long ago, Albert couldn't take long walks. He was diagnosed with a bad heart. After considering all the treatment options, his heart specialist recommended a pacemaker instead of putting him to sleep. Get the facts about animal research. What does being involved really mean? Is it making grilled cheese sandwiches for a sleepover? Staying for the curtain call at the talent show? Or learning the names of their favorite bands? Believe it or not, right now, there are parents just like you out there talking about things like this. From school to home, from friends to futures. And we'd like you to be a part of it. National PTA. Every child, one voice. We are back at Champlain Park with the Rebels on top of Elk River, 5-1. Three runs in the second, a couple more in the third for Champlain Park as Austin Hoyer completes his warm-up tosses. And, you know, for Elk River, they've got a game yet tonight and then a game tomorrow as well. So they need Hoyer really to, to work as many innings as, as he can. And, and like we've said, it certainly hasn't been all his fault today, the five runs on the board, some kind of well-placed hits and plays not made in the field. that they, they need to get as many innings as they can out of a Hoyer. It would be nice to just uh, just to save that bullpen and keep the pitching staff uh, somewhat healthy for this next uh, for these next games. Kaminsky dropping one into right field, and he's in, standing up with a three base hit. That one dropping behind the right fielder McMillan. That one kept carrying. I didn't. I thought that was going to be an out, but it was tailing away from McMillan. Couldn't get a glove on it. And Kaminsky runs well, goes around second, and he's into third. Now, Trevor has been on all three times today. You know, McElroy will run for him again. He killed the batter and a pitch in the dirt. Blocked by BZ. Good block by BZ, keeping that ball in front of him. <laughs> Chopped at the plate. One ball, one strike. McElroy at third, nobody out here in the Rebel fourth. Ripped foul past Coach Corey Davis in the third base coaching box. Killed today, one for three with a run batted in. One for two, rather. Fly out in the single. And hits this one out into left field. This was over the left fielder's head. McElroy is in into second is Keel with a double. Rowski unable to come up with the ball. Another run in for Champlain Park, and it's six to one. And Rowski making a dive for it, couldn't come up with it. Gilb has a second RBI of the day. And Anderson, the batter, pitching the dirt, throw down to third by Beasy. He's a good one. They get the runner. Gilb is out. Champlain Park's been aggressive on the bases today, and it's worked out well for them. But this time, Beasy, a good stop. Strong throw to third, and the tag put on by Meyer, and Gilb is out. 2-5 on the putouts, and nobody on, and one out. And the count 1-0 and oh to Anderson. Hey. 
first pitch is a called strike. Strike calls two and two. Jason Anderson one for two today, single and a strikeout. Hoyer's pitch missed low and away. Now the count is full. One is a walk to Anderson. And so he's on for the second time today, and it'll bring up Pearson. Swing and fouled out of play. I talked about yesterday how the Rebels Matt picked up 20 hits that they haven't dropped off much yet today. 11 hits so far in three and a third innings. Yeah, you like to see these kind of uh, offensive explosions from these kinds of teams. Uh, trying to get into playoff situations and all that makes them look even much more dangerous. Makes teams scared when they get ready to face him playoff when playoff comes around. Oh, Coaches in it. section five will meet on this Sunday and this is a very important game for Champlin Park. Nyquist out on the outfield grass making the catch of the Pearson pop up. And there's out number two. And Brian McGill the batter. Pitch, fouling it off is McGill. Oh, A one pitch grounded deep to Nyquist. It's short goes to second to short way. Gibbons covering. And Anderson forced out at second for the third out of the inning. For Champlain Park in the fourth inning, they do pick up a run and a couple of hits and leave one. We played four. Champlain Park up on Elk River, six to one. What do you want from the all-powerful Oz? A brain. People wonder how I got to be the all-knowing wizard of Oz. I go to USA.gov, the official source for government info. Pick up the student loan form to your right. Next! I want to go back to Kansas. Oh, that's a toughie. Back to USA.gov, passport applications. Uh -oh. For federal and state government information, there's no place like USA.gov. I'm walking. The American Heart Association says for every hour of regular vigorous exercise we do, like very brisk walking, we could live two hours longer. Imagine, if we walk to the moon and back, we could live forever. Find out about the upcoming American Heart Association Start Heart Walk in your area. Walk with your coworkers, friends, and family. Go to the top half of the fifth inning. Trevor Kaminsky has pitched well. Champlin Park hitting the ball well with 11 hits. And some good defense so far on the Rebel side. So it's been a good day for the home team so far. And now a 6-1 to one lead as we move to the top half of the fifth inning. Let's go, man. Go, man. Go, kid. Elks looking for a rally. They're going to have to hey, figure out a way to get some hits off Trevor Kaminsky. Just the hit by Hoyer so far back in the second inning. It always helps, I'm sure. Pitcher too, when you've got 
lead more than just a run or two. You get a comfortable lead, you go in and throw strikes. If a guy gets on, you don't have to worry necessarily about that first guy coming in. You can go out and pitch your game, right? It definitely helps. It gives a, gives a pitcher a sense of relaxation, knowing that he's got such a comfortable lead. He can can go after hitters, make themselves, make the hitters get themselves out. It's, uh, it's always a good situation when you're up, the, up like this. Three balls and one strike. The count to Andrew McMillan. Well, you don't want to start walking people, though. It's just the it's leadoff walk, but the Elks need to get something to get moving, and so McMillan drawing the walk to start the fifth. And first walk issued by Kaminsky struck out seven through the first four innings. And now Riley Gibbons, the batter. Back. McMill in the base runner. That's his seventh walk that he's drawn this season among the team leaders in that category. Got a lead at first base. No one pitch to Gibbons from Kaminsky. Cut and missed, 0-2. Oh hey, head up, head up, head up. Flush it, kid, flush it. Come on, now. 0-2. Oh right, strike three call. Gibbons out on strikes for the second time today. One away, and Milo Holmes the batter. This one grounded to the right side. What? Good pickup at second base by Riley Johnson to throw on to Pearson for the out. Those are the plays you want to have happen. Yeah. The most difficult play, but difficult enough where, you know, Johnson's again got to make the play. And Elk River has made all those plays today. Champlin Park it really has for the most part. Champlin Park's looking really good in the field right now. And Riley Johnson, just a sophomore, making it. Made it look like he's a senior out there making those plays. McMillan does move up to second on the play, so he's in scoring position. Time called now by Ben Johnson. He steps out of the box. Johnson today 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs for him. That time trying to bunt for a hit. Right back at Kaminsky on that attempt. He fouls the first pitch away. Johnson, 311 batting average on the season and a 418 on base percentage coming into play today. So he's a guy that can get things going for the Elks. Had success this spring, nine and five on the year. This Elk River team and eight and two in the conference coming into play today. Swing and a miss. Champlin Park could be very tough in the playoffs, Matt, with the one-two pitching they've got, Brandon Rushmeyer and Trevor Kaminsky. They definitely could. Rushmeyer's had an outstanding season, 5-0 and on the year. Kaminsky 3-1, perhaps to go to 4-1 and today. If he can hold this lead. Definitely. One ball, two strikes to Johnson. Go ahead. Definitely two pitchers you do not want to, these teams in this conference do not want to face coming down the stretch. They are red hot as of late. Kaminsky taking a look back at McMillan, comes home with a swing and a miss by Johnson. There's the third out of the inning in the ninth strikeout for Trevor Kaminsky today in five innings. No runs, no hits, no errors. The Elks leave one. Yeah, we go to the home half of the fifth. 6-1 Champlain Park. You watch Channel 12 at home. Why not on the go? Channel 12 is online at 12.tv. Watch on your phone, on your tablet. Channel 12 is your local source wherever you go. Just log on to 12.tv. Check out our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and even watch live events via live stream. So don't wait. Stay up to date with Channel 12 and 12.tv, your local source.
John Jacobson, Matt Smith back with you at Champlain Park High School where the Rebels have a 6-1 lead on the Elk River Elks. Going to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Seven, eight, nine hitters up for the Rebels. Smith, Johnson, and Brooks against Austin Hoyer. Giving up 11 hits Hoyer has on the day, but some of those infield variety, a couple of unearned runs scored against him as well. Hoyer's definitely pitched a lot better than the, than the scorebook is, perceives it, that he has. He's been keeping the ball, keeping the ball low, keeping the ball on the ground, making his infielders work. He's been pitching pretty well. Derek Smith taking, and it's three balls and one strike. This one chopped to short, Nyquist. Throws to first, just got him. It's running well, but Nyquist able to make the play at first. 6-3 in the put out for the first out. Look at it again. Really close play at first. Didn't get him by much, did he? Not too much. First base umpire talking with Jordan Holm there. Not sure what that discussion was about as Riley Johnson gets ready to step into the batter's box. Drove in a run in his last at bat and a deep fly ball to Holmes in center field. Foul ball, and Johnson's hit, it's one and one. So grounded up the middle, and Riley Johnson has his second hit of the day. A one-out single to center here in the fifth. Twelfth hit of the game for Champlain Park. Solid single by Johnson. Sophomore second baseman aboard with one out. And Brooks the batter. Brooks, that ball hit last time, remember, that third baseman Meyer had to hurry on and ended up throwing it away at first base, and Brooks made it all the way to third. Hoyer's throw to first, and back in is Johnson. No balls, one strike. Runner going, here's the throw by BC down to second and just in safely with a stolen base is Riley Johnson. Pretty good throw by the catcher Brennan BC. Johnson with even better speed. BC does a good job of picking that ball and making a good strong throw to second base. Riley Johnson just beats it out. And caught on the 0-2 pitch and the foul tip. BZ hangs on. Brooks is out on strikes for out number two. Four strikeout for Hoyer. And here's Tim Munn. Up high, ball one. Two balls, no strikes. Strike 
strike call. It's two and one. Two and two. Good pitches by Hoyer to work the count back to even. One grounding it hard past second base and into right field, getting it past Gibbons. Johnson is in to score, an RBI single for Munn. Another run on the board for Champlin Park. And it's seven to one. Munn with his first hit today. have scored in every inning but the first and they left two runners on that inning. Here's Kaminsky. Did a good day pitching and a good day at the plate. Single in the first, reached on an error in the third. Tripled in the fourth. Let off last inning with that three base hit to right. Warriors pitch grounded hard to third, fair ball. Meyer long throw across the diamond and makes the play. And Kaminsky is retired. Strong play by Brandon Meyer to retire Trevor Kaminsky and the Rebels here in the fifth inning. But Champlin Park again picking up another run on two hits. And they leave one. Five innings completes Champlin Park up on Elk River, seven to one. must be love. It must be hospice. Maple Grove, New Hope, and Brooklyn Center. Channel 12 is your local source. When it comes to TV channels, you've got choices. As a matter of fact, you've got lots of choices. But only one channel is your local source in your community every day, bringing you the news, sports, events, and city information that affect you. So seek out the source. Channel 12, 30 years your local source. Look at the line score, Elk River one run, one hit. Three errors, Champlain Park seven, 13 and one. Comfortable six run lead for Trevor Kaminsky as he goes to the mound in the top half of the sixth inning. Two, three, and four hitters up for the Elks. Gunrowski, Holm, and Beasy, the scheduled three, to come up against the senior for Champlain Park. Cutting a miss. One ball, one strike. It was a catcher when you've got a guy for five innings and you're getting into a little, little bit later stages of games, a high school pitcher, what signs do you look for that he may be tiring? Not, not that Kaminsky necessarily is, but what do you watch for? Uh, as, a, as a catcher, you always kind of look for their front side, their uh, front shoulder and their glove side. If they, if they start to fly open a little bit uh, too early, they'll usually start to throw the ball high and away uh, to a lefty, high and into a righty. Um, those are usually kind of signs that they're getting tired. One, two pitch, just missed, two and two. Still looks like Kaminsky's in control of the game so far. Gave up that leadoff walk last inning, but came back with a couple of strikeouts and a ground ball to finish off the Elks in the fifth. Got a miss here, dropped. Smith's got to go to first to get the put on. And to do that a couple of times today, two, three on the put out, but Gonrowski out on strikes for the second time. And Trevor Kaminsky has 10 strikeouts. We saw his numbers at the top of the first inning when we showed it. He has struck out well over and batter an inning, 28 strikeouts before today in 17 and two thirds innings. And so far today, 10 and five and a third. 
Comiskey definitely has the stuff to to get those kind of uh, numbers, strikeouts. Jordan Holm, the number three hitter. Takes a couple of pitches out of the strike zone. Two balls, no strikes. Trying to get on base for the first time today. And Holm's been a good hitter for them. 357 average on the season. When chopped is short, Youngquist. Up with the throw to first, and Pearson, get, did he get the tag on him? No, he did not. And Holm is safe, safe at first. Good job by Kip Youngquist to come in on that ball and get the short hop, and unfortunately just throw it a little, threw it a little high and off the bag, and Pearson did a good job coming off the bag, going, going for the tag, but didn't get it. Missed on the sweep tag, it'll go as an error on Youngquist on the throw, second error for Champlain Park today. So home aboard with one out in the six for Elk River. And Brennan Beasy the batter. He has struck out twice today against Trevor Kaminsky. There's a first pitch strike. at the plate. Two strikes to the Elks junior catcher. No two fouled back. Swing and a miss. Beasy out on strikes again against Kaminsky. And two away. Two away. Holm still at first. And Eric Nyquist, a first pitch strike. High one and one. Out oh, back. One ball, two strikes. Two to Nyquist, tails inside, two and two. <laughs> Called strike three, Nyquist is out and a strong pitching performance continuing for Trevor Kaminsky. Strikes out the side here in the sixth. He has racked up 12 strikeouts. No runs, no hits, one air, one left to four the Oaks. Bottom half of the sixth coming, you're watching High School Baseball on Channel 12. Hi, I'm here to tell you about a new medical website designed especially for older folks. Website, you say? I can't work on computers, they're not senior friendly, blah, blah, blah. But the National Institutes of Health fixed all that. Now you can make the type bigger, increase contrast, even make it talk to you. Arthritis. Just go to NIHseniorhealth.gov and get the best medical information available anywhere. NIHseniorhealth.gov. Built with you in mind.
New pitcher for Elk River is Alex Babcock. Senior right-hander will come on. In relief of Austin Hoyer, who worked five innings. Gave up seven runs, five of them earned. Babcock go to work on the heart of the Champlin Park batting order. Keogh Anderson and Pearson, three, five, four and five hitters for Champlin Park. Grounded is short on the first pitch. Nyquist will throw to first. Kilb retired and went out in the home half of the sixth inning on the pitch. Good start for Babcock. One pitch, one out. Good job by Nyquist making a good strong throw over to first. Getting the out. One away, and here's Jason Anderson. Anderson is going to play college football next year. Lining up his senior year in baseball here. The hit today in three at bats. Really an outstanding lineman the last couple of years for Champlain Park football. One ball, two strikes to Anderson. Babcock winds and fires inside, two and two. Missed outsides, three and two. A little different look for the Rebels hitters going uh, from Bob, uh, Hoyer to Babcock here. Looks like Babcock kind of slings it a little low three-quarter arm slot. Looks like he's got a little run on his fastball. Gets should, the strike out here, excuse me, man. Should be a good test for the Rebels. And he's got the first two outs here in the sixth inning. And Eric Pearson stepping in. Hitting a run scored and three at bats. Grounds this one to deep short and under the glove of Nyquist and into center field. So we'll take a look at that again. If it's a hit or an error, it seemed to skip under the glove of the shortstop Nyquist. Yeah, he didn't come up with a clean lead. That'll be an error on Nyquist. Pearson aboard. Casey Carlson will hit here for Brian McGill. Carlson, a junior, first at bat today. McGill had gone one for three. Babcock's pitch to him is strike one. Pearson runner at first. Babcock's pitch home to Carlson. Slice foul. Just past the bag at third. Yeah, 
Babcock trying to get the Elks to the dugout here. No balls, two strikes to Carlson. Hit in new center field, short center. It's a base hit, taking the turn and holding. At second is Pearson. It's a little flare hit out in the center. And Carlson with a two out single, Pearson to second. Nice solid single for Casey right up the middle. A hit every inning for Champlin Park. Now 14 on the day. And here's the catcher, Smith. First pitch strike from Babcock. Hit pretty well out in the air, out to center field, but Holmes is over toward left and makes the catch. Tagged by Derek Smith, but Holmes the catch, and Champlin Park out in the sixth inning. No runs for the Rebels, one hit, one error. They leave a couple. We go to the seventh. Trevor Kaminsky hoping to complete this win for Champlin Park. It's seven to one, Rebels. Yeah, but did you see how much he had to drink last night? I can't believe that guy made it home. Nobody drives drunk anymore. Hold on, I got another call coming in. While drunk driving rates have dropped greatly, negligent driving and speeding fatalities have skyrocketed. Someone dies every 13 minutes from negligent driving, so keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, and your phone put away. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Six innings of one hit, one run ball for Trevor Kaminsky as he comes out to the mound to close things out, perhaps for the Rebels here in the top half of the seventh inning and a six run lead. Matt Smith, you just completed your first year of college and college baseball at the Missouri Southern. Tell us about that. That was a good experience. Uh, definitely stepping up to the next level of uh, baseball. It is definitely eye opening to see all the different competition that you can see out there. It's, Definitely different from Minnesota ball because it was a lot warmer and a lot more, uh, a lot better competition. A lot of games played. A lot of games yeah. played. A lot of games played. It was definitely fun. It was a good time. Home for the summer. You'll be playing baseball this summer as, as well, right? Yes, sir. A little amateur ball. Yep. Yep. So Trevor Kaminsky, six innings, he struck out 12, gave up the one run, but it was unearned back in the second. Beasy reached on an error. Hoyer drove in the courtesy runner, Boutain, for the Elks. Only action on the bases today. Had a couple other base runners, but no other hits other than the one in that uh, inning. Grounded a third by Babcock, throw by McGill over to first. Babcock retired his first at bat today. One away in the seventh. We get a pinch hitter for Elk River here in the seventh. Clay Schlosser. Senior left-handed hitter will hit for McMillan. senior third baseman, his first look at Kaminsky and the first pitch, swing and a miss. Foul the 
away, 0-2. Two pitch and Schlosser out on three strikes and 13 strikeouts now for Kaminsky. Not another pinch hitter, Ben Boutin, who was a courtesy runner early in the game, will hit here for Riley Gibbons. Elks down to their final out here in the top half of the seventh inning. Kaminsky's first pitch offered out at strike one. So, Matt, you had a chance to catch Trevor last year. What has improved the most in his game, do you think? I would say his ability to command his fastball in the strike zone. He's, it, from today, watching the pitch, it looks like he's been uh, been able to command both sides of the plate and working his two-seam inside the righties, inside the lefties. It's It's been quite fun watching him pitch today. Oh, two pits, another strikeout, and Trevor Kaminsky didn't seem to slow down or tire at all today, Matt Smith. Two strikeouts to end the game, 14 strikeouts for the senior in a complete game victory, a great pitching effort by him. It was a great game by Trevor. Way to, way to command the strike zone, way to throw strikes, let his defense do the work. Great game. The Rebels get some timely hits. They play well in the field for the most part, and they secure an important late season win, their 10th win of the season in 17 games. And with the section seeding coming up, they close out the week with wins over Good Park Center and Elk River teams as they head into seeding and, and section play. One regular season game left for the Rebels next week. We'll take a break here. We'll come back and hear from a couple of the Rebels in a moment. I'm watching high school baseball on Channel 12 Sports. E-file. Get receipt confirmation and a quicker refund. Log on or tell your tax preparer to e-file for you and join the 53 million e-filers who consider it done. Welcome back to Champlin Park where the Rebels win their 10th game of the spring. They're now 10 and 7 on the season. They defeat Elk River 7-1. John Jacobson joined now by Tim Munn and Trevor Kaminsky. And Trevor, heck of a game pitch by you today. It's seven innings, one hit, one run unearned, and 14 strikeouts. Tell me what was working for you. Uh, they had a lot of lefties in their lineup, and uh, with my two seam running away from them and my changeup running away, I was able to locate those, and um, I was able to spot those. And, you know, Smitty, our catcher, worked really hard back there, and being a young catcher, he's come a long way. So it, we, he did a really, really good job today. It's been kind of an up and down spring for, for the whole team. What do you feel you guys are doing well now? Nice win yesterday against Park Center and then this one today heading into the playoffs. You know, we, we're starting to build as a team a little bit more. We're starting to come a little bit more comfortable with everyone and we're just starting to find each other. Uh, we brought up a couple of sophomores, which, uh, you know, kind of gave guys a little kick in the butt, you know, knowing that, you know, they got to kind of kick it in gear here. And they've done a great job, you know, all of them coming up and, you know, filling in the lineup and working hard out there. So uh, with that, we've been able to have some success here and gearing up for sections, we're very confident. How much does this win help against a good Elk River team? It helps a lot. You know, we beat them first game of the year. We beat them 6-4 to four in another really good game where, you know, we was pretty clean. Obviously, early, we had a lot of things that we had to work on in tonight, you know, pretty clean game, not many errors, and, uh, you know, it it really helps the confidence in the guys, so. Congratulations on this win, enjoy it. Thank you. Tim Munn uh, hit uh, and a run scored for you and an RBI, and how about the, the, the bats, are they starting to come together? 20 hits, I think, yesterday, 14 today. Do you feel pretty good about how the ways you guys are swinging? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we started off a little slow towards the start of the season, but, the last few games, we've really been able to kick it in gear. We've been seeing the ball really well. 
from center field, how fun is it to be able to watch the, you know Brandon and, and Trevor pitch and, and watch the, the hitter try to flail away? You know, in the outfield, it's it's pretty boring, but I mean that's that's a good thing. You know, they're just they're doing a great job throwing strikes. You know, just mowing, mowing guys down, so it's just a lot of fun to watch. Ten and seven record, but do you guys feel like you're going to be a contender in, in section five, and it's a little more wide open this year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's there's no really, I mean, powerhouse in the conference. I mean, we're we're starting to get our confidence back. We've been doing pretty well lately, so definitely, definitely have some confidence going into the sections. You look at the section play, and you play the games down at, at Wintercrest. What do you, what do you like about that park? And and let, tell me about the other teams in, in the that might give you trouble in, in the section. Um, you know, really any team. Any any day, any team can have success, you know. So we just have to be prepared for that. Just got to take take it one game at a time. Be ready, you know. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's I'm really looking forward to that. Congrats on the win today. Good luck next week and in the you. section playoffs. Thank you very much. All right, Tim Munn and Trevor Kaminsky and two of the winning players today for Champlain Park. A nice win for them at home here. Solid win over against a good Elk River team. Trevor Kaminsky with 14 strikeouts, the team with 14 hits, and they win it by a score of 7-1. to one. That'll do it for our telecast today. For Matt Smith and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson. Thanks for watching our coverage of Northwest River Conference Baseball on Channel 12.